Di, we gather that uh, Lukashenko has confirmed that Yevgeny Prigozhin, the uh, leader of the Wagner Group, is now in uh, Belarus. Yes, he has. Um, I think he's still talking. He likes to talk at considerable length when he gets the chance, Alexander Lukashenko. And he's gone into quite a lot of detail about his uh, dealings with Lukashenko, uh, sorry, with Prigozhin on Saturday. As you say, he says that the Wagner leader is now in Belarus, but uh, Wagner forces are not. He says they're still in Lugansk in uh, the Donbass in eastern Ukraine. Um, and there was some reporting that Belarus was already uh, constructing camps for them. And Lukashenko denied that, but he said, if they want camps, we can build them for them. Um, but he said, you know, my offer to Prigozhin was that if you want to crash in Belarus, you can at your own expense. And so that's what he's doing. And uh, he talked about the telephone calls that the two men had on Saturday as the March for Justice, as Prigozhin called his march on Moscow, um, was going on. And he said that at 11 o'clock he first spoke to Prigozhin and the man was in a pretty much a frenzy. Um, and the first half hour was just packed with expletives. Lukashenko said there were 10 times more expletives uh, than any normal conversation would have had. Um, and that uh, Prigozhin, having talked to his men at the front who'd seen vast numbers of their comrades die, uh, was really half mad, had arrived in Rostov half mad from the front. Um, and also he mentioned the fact that those involved in the negotiations alongside Lukashenko were the director of the FSB, Alexander Bortnikov, and the de deputy defence minister who we'd seen sitting alongside Prigozhin in Rostov. They had apparently brokered um, the, the, the decision for Lukashenko to, uh, to take the lead with Prigozhin. And Lukashenko had had to tell Prigozhin, you know, Putin is not going to speak to you. You're not even going to have a telephone call, so you're going to have to be dealing with me. Some pretty juicy details there about how the whole situation uh, was diffused on Saturday. Um, and he is continuing to talk, so we'll bring you more on that um, as we get it. As you say, Vladimir Putin has also decided to um, talk to his security forces, defence ministers, a big uh, meeting in the Kremlin uh, now with his defence ministers and uh, before that a meeting in the Kremlin's Cathedral Square with around 2,500 um, troops and uh, security services uh, in front of him, just thanking them for standing united, uh, for stopping the country from going to the brink of civil war. I think he felt that uh, and feels that, you know, going to his security forces now is a way of bringing this all to an end. Um, I think it's also a, a suggestion to anybody within the security forces um, that, uh, that, that they will not, you know, that any dissonance will not be tolerated. But I expect that from now on, after these, uh, this series of events today from Vladimir Putin, he'll probably try and put this whole business behind him and hope that uh, the questions that the public have, that the questions the elite have, uh, are abated somewhat. Um, the question is, will they be? What about the position of Lukashenko himself? I mean, in the past, Putin's treated him with barely disguised contempt. He's emerged as a more important player in the region after this, hasn't he? Well, I think that he's st still uh, very useful to Vladimir Putin. Um, and yes, I mean, he, he loves moments like this. And yes, he's kind of come out of this looking uh, quite good because he's managed to engineer uh, a solution, but he wouldn't have been able to do that without uh, Putin's blessing and without Putin's direction. I mean, Lukashenko, since the disputed elections in August 2020, has very much had to do um, Putin's bidding. Uh, and, he, and, he, and he loves seizing moments of glory like this, and he's doing so. Um, I think that's, that's, that's pretty much all I can say about the matter. You know, what we've seen over the last three years uh, in the relationship between Belarus and Russia is that Belarus has uh, rapidly lost its sovereignty, something that Lukashenko over three decades really tried to maintain. And now uh, he's just happy to have played a role, I think.